If you're living in any form of fear, anxiety, and worry, those emotions actually shut down and weaken your immune system. It puts your body in a fight or flight response, so your body starts pumping out cortisol. High cortisol is not, that actually lowers melatonin production, so you won't sleep as well. It weakens your immune system long-term. It doesn't allow your body to regenerate and heal other things going on. Hey everybody, Dr. Axe here. Welcome to the show. Hey, today I'm gonna be talking about can your body kill a virus and how to naturally strengthen your immune system? Some of my most advanced tips in strengthening your immune system. So let's go ahead and talk through how to naturally strengthen your immune system. And also, again, I want to answer that question on antiviral herbs, okay? Or can our bodies actually kill a virus? And so we're going to dive into that here today. And I have some great tips for you. The world is searching for, hey, is it, you know, are there things that are natural? Are there things that are synthetic? Are there shots? Well, you know, what, what can help our body, our body's immune system, or what can protect us against a virus? And here's what I'm here to tell you today is, is that your body is your greatest weapon against a virus. So remember that. Your greatest source against a, a virus is not a something synthetic. It's not a natural, you know, the single natural herb or remedy. It is your body's own, uh, your, your, your body's own system. Your own body actually has the ability to get rid of viruses. And it does that in different ways. You know, when, if you have a fever, your body is increasing its internal heat to do what? To kill off a virus. Every year since the beginning of time, cold and flu season ends, tends to end in the spring. Sometimes it can go a little bit into summer, but since the beginning of time, uh, cold and flu season and different viruses have died off. Why is that? Because it gets hot in the summer and most viruses don't, can't handle the heat. And so this is, these are just very important things to remember, you know, in the world we're living in today. And so what I'm going to talk about is, again, here's the secret. Here's the key. I started off with this. How do you kill a virus? Can you kill a virus? My answer is your body can your body can kill a virus. So let me, let, me, let me get into this and say this, okay? When, who is most susceptible to a cold and flu or virus or, or for not just getting it, but also to it causing more serious problems long-term? It's people that are older, okay, typically over the age of 60 or sometimes over the age of 75, and people that are immunodeficient. And really it's both, it's the same things. It's people that are immunodeficient. That's the term that people keep using. Well, what is immunodeficiency? Well, immune is your immune system and deficiency means it's weak. It's deficient. So how do you, so, so this is common sense, right? For everybody. So what could be our greatest strategy at fighting a virus or a bacteria or a parasite or any of those things? It's strengthening your own body's immune system so your body can heal itself. Think about this principle. This is one of the most powerful principles on the planet. Your body heals itself. So if I had a cut on my hand here right now, if I had a cut, you know what's going to happen over time? It's going to heal. You know what doesn't heal it? Foods. Like, and I'm going to talk about herbs, by the way. Today's episode, I'm going to get into herbs, essential oils, supplements, superfoods, ancient formulas and blends that have been used for thousands of years for fighting viruses, that sort of thing. I'm going to talk about all that, but here's the key principle that everybody has to get. Your body heals itself. If I have a cut on my hand here, you know, turmeric doesn't heal that. Broccoli doesn't heal that. Echinacea doesn't heal that. Your body heals itself. Now, here's what, you know, a natural remedy can do. Let's say, you know, you put lavender oil on it or manuka honey. It will keep it from getting infected, okay? It can keep it from getting worse. It can protect the area. And a similar thing, you know, vitamin C. Let's say you're eating vitamin C and zinc-rich food. Your body uses vitamin C and zinc to help heal wounds and repair those areas. But here's the thing to know. Lavender, herbal remedies, synthetic things that pharmaceutical companies are making, none of those actually heal you. Your body actually heals itself. So the greatest thing that you can ever do to protect your own body and your own health, to fight viruses, to do anything, the greatest thing you could ever do is strengthen 
your own immune system. When you strengthen your own immune system, you strengthen your body. Now your body goes and kills the virus. That's what does it. It's the power is inside of you and you can strengthen that power through some of the recommendations I'm going to be going through today. The body heals itself and the greatest way to heal is by simply supporting and strengthening your own body because your body is what kills the virus, your immune system. Your body will raise its temperature. Your body will uh, you know, dry things out. Your body will start getting rid of things through mucus. Like Your body is there actually healing itself. It's such a critical thing to remember. So let me dive in. I want to start off here going through. Now, this is a, uh, now listen, this could be an absolute true story. It could be a myth, but I think generally it is true. Um, but this is out of an aromatherapy book. And it's, uh, I may be pronouncing this incorrectly, but I think it's uh, Getafase's uh, aromatherapy. And this was a man, actually, if you've ever, you, you want to know what made lavender so popular is this was a scientist, aromatherapist, and he, bur he, he burnt his arm, okay, really badly. He then took his arm and he literally soaked it in lavender oil. And over the course of a month, he was amazed at how well it healed. In fact, he really had no remnants of scars after burning himself severely. And so this man studied a lot of things like essential oils. Well, he wrote and created a recipe, and it's called The Four Thieves. And people have come up with many of their own recipes over the years that kind of follow this, uh, this story. Uh, but I'm going to get into this. So here we go. Here's what they said. And there's a story of these thieves uh, during a plague many, many years ago. Okay, I think it was in the uh, mid-1700s in Marseille in France. And what they found was is that these people were grave robbers. So they had this major plague going on at the time, and the, there were grave robbers, and they actually were arrested. And they went before the judge, and the judge said, you know, typically for this sort of thing, we, 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 we execute you. But he said, how have you not caught this plague? And they said, well, we are spice traders, and we cover ourselves with a blend of vinegar and then herbs. And these herbs and vinegar together is what, is what has kept us from getting this virus. And listen, this is just one example. Do you know since the beginning of time, people have been using herbs and spices and superfoods to help support their body, strengthen their body, and protect their body. In fact, in the Bible, it's frequently referenced. They have an oil in the Bible. It's called the holy anointing oil. And it's a blend of clove oil uh, kasha oil, actually it's, no, it's, it's kasha, it's cinnamon, it's, um, myrrh oil, uh, it's olive oil and it's calamus. Okay. And many of those herbs that I'm talking about, you know, cinnamon and, ca and, and cassia and myrrh, those have actually antiviral properties and they help support your immune system. And so listen, throughout history, people have been using these natural remedies to, to support and strengthen their bodies or to have antiviral components that I'll talk about, uh, which, we will, which we will jump in. But let's go ahead and talk about this. So here's what it says word for word. It says, take three pints of strong vinegar and a handful of wormwood, marjoram, sage, uh, loads and loads of clove, along with angelica, rosemary, and camphor. And there are other, other uh, recipes there where they add in garlic. And so you add this in together, and it's these herbs that have these antiviral properties that they used at that time. And today, there are many blends that have actually many herbs that have similar effects to the ones that are in this, including now we're very familiar with sage and clove and rosemary that were used in the original formula. But in addition to that, we have herbs like uh, clove, sage, thyme, rosemary, garlic, uh, and then there are many other herbs I'm going to get into in just a minute that have these similar properties that are so powerful. But here's the thing to remember, again, I think er a lot of these herbs that have strong antiviral, antimicrobial, you know, antiparasitic properties, they might be able to protect you, generally speaking, and I think they're good. I do, again, think the most powerful thing we can do is support our immune system. And so I'm first going to go through the antiviral herbs that have been used throughout history, according to the Bible, according to, you know, uh, ancient textbooks used in Europe and the United States. So I'm going to talk about these antiviral herbs here 
uh, right now and some that are still being used. Uh, actually, some, some of these have research for them today. So number one is oregano. Now, oregano is part of the mint family and it actually contains a really amazing compound called carvacol. And now these studies were done in test tubes, but it was shown to have antiviral properties. And I want to be really clear. I'm not saying that this oil of oregano protects you or kills any specific virus that people are specifically battling today. I'm just covering it has antiviral properties according to research. And specifically, it's been shown to be effective against a virus type called HSV1. It's called rotavirus. And this is a virus that tends to cause you know, diarrhea in, in adults and children and also affects your respiratory system, can cause respiratory infections. But oregano oil specifically, or oil of oregano, has been shown to be a powerful herb because of its antiviral properties. All right, number two, sage. Sage is also a member of the mint family and is a cousin of oregano. And this one has been used for a long time. Now, sage, as it was used in traditional Chinese medicine, uh, sage is typically used to also help treat dampness or phlegm and mucus. So if somebody is actually having mucus and phlegm in their chest or their gut or in their body and they have that sort of congested chest, sage is, was typically consumed as a tea um, you know, or, uh, or, or as a supplement. It's been used in many different ways. But this one in particular, that's how it was used throughout Chinese medicine. A few others that are powerful, of course, garlic, right? Gar garlic is so powerful. It contains a compound called allicin. And it's been shown to even be effective against a study on warts, which actually can be a type of virus. Also, it's been shown in studies uh, on things like the common cold and potentially viral pneumonia. But I do want to say, again, this research, uh, they probably need to do more research on this. And, and when I'm saying these herbs, again, things like garlic, I'm not saying, hey, this is a cure for anything. I'm just saying that it has some antiviral properties. But at the same time, we know through, according to ancient Chinese medicine, uh, foods that are light yellow in color, like garlic and chicken broth and ginger, many of them have immune supportive properties. So generally speaking and supporting your immunity, garlic is amazing. And there is a study on animals. And so typically, by the way, there are different standards of studies. You have studies that are in a test tube. You have studies that are on animals. And then you have studies done on humans and sort of double blind you know, uh, studies with a placebo. And animal study, you know, test tube are typ typically the least accurate or you know, again, it's farther away from being a human, right? And then you have animal and then you have adult. So this is a study done on animals as we're talking about garlic. And it was found in the study to enhance the immune system response by stimulating your body's own protective immune cells to safeguard against viral infections was that study specifically. A few other uh, interesting about some of the most powerful herbs. Here's another one, echinacea, okay? Echinacea has been used throughout Europe and areas of the world for thousands of years for supporting immune health. And today it's probably one of the top two selling herbal remedies when it comes to uh, supporting your immune system, especially against acute conditions. Um, it's been used, it was actually used by Native Americans for viral infections specifically. And it's also been used uh, for treating things like, uh, like the flu, and most notably, it actually has immune boosting effects for treating, again, as I mentioned earlier, viral infections. And there are actually studies done on both animals and humans with echinacea, which is one of the reasons why it actually can be claimed to be a powerful immune support is there were studies done on humans with echinacea. Now, here's another big one, right? This is probably the number one, elderberry. You know, now I've seen some recent conflict on elderberry. It's so interesting. There was this doctor that came out and said that... Um, elderberry causes some your body to release some cytokines and first off let me say there's actually no evidence of that and number two that may not even be a problem here's the deal when your body kicks off an immune response your immune response is somewhat an inflammatory response there's going to be because your body's having to go and break down and fight a virus and a bacteria and clean some things up so that's not a bad thing so listen elderberry has been used for thousands of years to support and stimulate your immune system in fact there was a study on mice that found that consuming elderberry 
suppressed in the influence of virus replication and stimulated your body's immune response. So here's the amazing thing about elderberry. It both boosted your own immune system, but also had antiviral properties. That's why this is one of the most used today herbs. And it, it tends to be called Sambucus when we talk about uh, berries like elderberry. And this was a review done on 104 different studies done on 180 people. So this isn't even a single study, four studies on 180 people. Now, I do want to say this again. I'm not claiming that elderberry uh, can kill off all viruses and anything. I'm just saying according to these studies, these four studies done on humans, it was found to support immune system and have some of these antiviral properties. All right, let's talk about another one. Now, this one is one of my favorites, astragalus. I'm going to talk about this more in a minute, but astragalus was shown to be very, very powerful for so many reasons. One of my favorites and because big thing here, it's an immune booster. Now, astragalus is probably one of the top three herbs prescribed in all of traditional Chinese medicine throughout all of Asia. It's kind of crazy that astragalus, we hardly ever use it here in America, yet in Asia, in certain areas of India and the Middle East, it's actually the number one used herb on the planet. I hear turmeric is, okay? Turmeric in the United States is the most used herb, but in other areas of the world, J Japan, they're using, well, green tea's number one there actually, but then it's astragalus and some others. All right, ginger has some powerful antiviral properties and there are many more, but those are the top ones. And I wanna say, if you're wanting to know, hey, what are, what are, the, what are the best? You know, in that case, I really like elderberry. I like echinacea. I like astragalus a lot. Those are probably my top. And then probably oregano and garlic. And then if you've got a lot of phlegm and mucus, sage is powerful as well. All right, let's go and di dive into some of these other tips. Oh, I didn't get to mention this as well. There are actually some mushrooms that have some of these properties, including reishi and turkey tail. Those are the two most powerful. If we're talking mushrooms, turkey tail mushroom, which actually grows in the United States, and reishi mushroom, those two mushrooms have been shown to actually have some antiviral properties. But we know also the big thing is they support our immune system. By the way, a couple others I do want to mention here that are really great for the immune system and have antiviral properties. Clove, thyme, and olive leaf. Okay, clove, thyme, and olive leaf. And again, I want to put in this disclaimer one more time just because I want to make sure everybody gets this. I am not claiming that any of those herbs I just mentioned, that they will kill every single virus out there. I'm not saying they will kill, you know, they, they're, they're your ultimate protection and you should replace that with any sort of medical intervention. I want to say, hey, listen to what your doctors tell you. Follow their recommendations. But I do want to say again, uh, let, let me go back and say this, but here's the biggest truth of all. your body heals itself, okay? So right now, and here's how it does it, by eating certain foods, by practicing certain lifestyle tips, that's what's gonna strengthen your own immune system and then your own immune system kills viruses. That's what it does, your body, your power's in your body. That's what you gotta know. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. By the way, I had a question here uh, from Tina. What about candida overgrowth? Candida overgrowth, if you have a white coating on your tongue, that makes you more susceptible to certain infections because you actually already have a yeast infection, overgrowth of yeast in your body if you have a white coating on your tongue. And in that case, you want to do herbs that strengthen your immune system and your digestive system. And then in addition to that, you want to take some things that actually get rid of yeast, okay? Paldarco, which by the way is actually another antiviral I didn't talk about, but Paldarco is a really powerful herb, oregano, cinnamon, and then you want to get rid of sugar and you want to consume the diet I'm about to talk about, but a lot of cooked foods, warming foods, and foods that dry, a lot of bitter herbs, that's going to help with candida. But candida actually definitely isn't good. That dampness, viruses like a damp environment. And so you got to be careful there. All right. So let's talk about the most immune boosting foods. All right. Number one on the list that's been used for thousands and thousands of years, chicken broth. Chicken broth is number one, not beef broth, not fish broth, but chicken bone broth. You know, when I wasn't feeling well as a kid, it was that same remedy my mom gave time and time again, chicken soup. Okay. 
And then the other ancient remedy that goes along with it in ancient Asian medicine is ginger herbal tea. But chicken broth, a chicken vegetable soup. Now listen, you can consume this year round. If you want to say, you want to be strengthening your body on a regular basis, make homemade chicken soup or buy ve vegetable soup at your local health food store that's like very similar to homemade. But again, making it yourself is the best um, in a chicken bone broth soup. Now, here's the reason why chicken, chicken broth is better than beef broth. One, you know by the color. Foods that are light yellow strengthen the immune system. Um, also, chicken broth contains collagen, and along with collagen, it has glucosamine, chondroitin, and hyaluronic acid. These are compounds that strengthen your gut. Now, hey, remember this. You guys ready? Immune health starts with gut health. Who said that? 2,000 years ago, Hippocrates, he says, all health starts in the gut. All health starts in the gut. So in ancient Chinese medicine, actually, the system of the body that supports the immune system, because you guys have realized this, that, you know, different organs support each other. Like, did you know your adrenals support your thyroid, for instance? And we know that your, uh, you know, I'll give you another example, like your your liver supports your brain and nervous system and your digestive system supports your immune system. And so if you want to heal and support your body and naturally strengthen your immune system, one of the greatest things you can do is improve your digestive system and health. And how do you do that? Well, your gut lining is made up of primarily collagen and other, other nutrients and so by consuming those nutrients, it's going to support that area. It's called like supports like in ancient Asian medicine. So for instance, if you want to build muscles, you got to eat muscle meat like a chicken breast. If you want to support your gut, you got to eat foods rich in collagen like bone broth to support your gut. So chicken bone broth, the number one superfood for supporting immune health because it has collagen along with glucosamine, chondroitin, and hyaluronic acid, which are collagen boosters and digestive health boosters. So chicken bone broth is number one. My number two is fermented foods. Specifically, kimchi is amazing. Sauerkraut, but you know what? Of all the fermented foods, probably the best for your immune system, miso. Miso soup. You can buy miso paste at your regular grocery store, at your health food store. You know, I was shopping at places like Whole Foods Market and Sprouts Market and some other places and bought it recently. And I'll just put a, a, a in my chicken soup, a lot of times I'll put a tablespoon of miso paste in there and it adds a nice little flavor, but it's the flavor called umami. That's actually the flavor that strengthens your immune system is where like sour supports your detoxification system, bitter supports your brain and nervous system. Well, Again, umami, that flavor that's in miso, actually supports your immune system. But miso is powerful, so doing a miso soup would be great for you guys. So chicken bone broth, number one, immune boosting food. Number two is going to be probiotic-rich foods, like fermented foods, like miso, sauerkraut, and kimchi. And then here's the next one, vitamin C-rich vegetables. Here are the most vitamin C-rich vegetables. Broccoli, bell peppers, bok choy, Brussels sprouts and cabbage. Those are the most vitamin C rich vegetables and then vitamin C rich fruits. We're talking about citrus fruits like oranges, lemons, limes, and grapefruit, kiwi, strawberries, papaya. You know, these are all fantastic, these vitamin C rich fruits. And then berries as well are good. And then green leafy vegetables because they're so nutrient dense. Those are the top foods that are going to support your immune system. In addition, I would say a little bit of chicken. Uh, because it's so high in selenium and wild caught fish like salmon for some of those omega 3s. But those foods together, so it's a lot of bone broth, wild organic meats, fermented foods, lots of vegetables and fruits rich in vitamin C. If you consume a diet like that, you are strengthening your immune system. And listen, that's the key. If you want to heal from anything, support your body, strengthen your own body using food. Those are the top foods. Let me talk to you about my top immune strengthening herbs. So remember, you strengthen your own body. That's the key to healing from almost anything. So again, here we go. Immune boosting herbs. Number one herb to support your immune system, astragalus. It's astragalus. It's the number one herb used 
in Asian and Chinese medicine. It's the number one prescribed herb, yet we rarely use it today. Here's the reason why it's so powerful. It supports two areas of your body, your immune system and your digestive system. And your digestive system then affects your immune system. So that's why it's so powerful. It's the number one herb used for conditions like leaky gut syndrome as well. So again, astragalus is an amazing herb. Next one up, reishi mushroom. And the good thing about these herbs I'm mentioning now, these are herbs you can do more long-term. There are certain herbs that you don't want to be doing for long, long periods of time because they're too strong. You know, ginseng is great, but you don't want to be using that for more than a month at a time. Okay, if you have something acute, ginseng is great. You know, oregano. Oregano is great and you can do it for a period of up to like several months, but you don't want to do it long term all the time because it's a little too antimicrobial, it's a little too strong. But these herbs you can take for longer periods, astragalus, reishi, shisandra is a berry, very high in vitamin C, but also supports immunity, and then elderberry, okay? Those are my top, astragalus, reishi, shisandra, elderberry. Now, in terms of the nutrients that are most important, let's talk about the vitamins and minerals We've got vitamin C, okay? Vitamin C is known as your immune system vitamin. Vitamin D is known as your immune system vitamin as well. And then zinc is known as your immune system mineral. And one other favorite of mine is selenium. But the big ones, vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc, those are the nutrients you want to make sure you're getting. And if you're buying those as an as a individual nutrient or multivitamin, make sure there are foods and herbs in there and that it's, very, it's, it's got all these superfoods in it because that's, there's a lot of synthetic vitamin and supplements. In fact, it's still crazy to me. So many people just look for what's the cheapest brand and that's what they buy. No, when you buy a, you, when you buy a vitamin or supplement, look for quality. That is so important. Typically get what you pay for. All right, let's talk about lifestyle for a minute because this is a big deal. You know, again, it's all about strengthening your immune system. Listen to this statistic. I've said this and I'll probably say it a hundred more times. If you're sick of me hearing it, you're going to hear it again. According to a medical study just a few years back, here's what they found. 60 to 80% of all doctor's visits is due to stress. So if you're going to the doctor and you have an illness, 60 to 80% of the time, the number one factor is stress. That's crazy. And yet we rarely talk about stress today. And so number one tip, you got to reduce stress and you got to do it with positive emotions versus negative. If you're living in any form of fear, anxiety, and worry, those emotions actually shut down and weaken your immune system. It puts your body in a fight or flight response. So your body starts pumping out cortisol. High cortisol is not, that actually lowers melatonin production. So you won't sleep as well. It weakens your immune system long-term. It doesn't allow your body to regenerate and heal other things going on. So again, you've got to, if you're living in a state of weird, fear, worry, and anxiety, remove the trigger. Is it the news that's causing you to have anxiety? Is it a certain job, a person in your life? What is it? You've got to find a way to deal with that or get rid of it. And then unforgiveness is very toxic to your immune system. Now, in addition to those negative emotions, here's how you combat it. It's with faith, hope, gratitude, and love, okay? It's a spirit of faith, knowing things are going to be okay, when encouraging other people, focusing on the positive. Now, I'm not telling you to just be an idea, like a, you know, an idealist or, or like live in the, you know, you know, uh, be unrealistic and not be grounded and rooted in truth. Okay, you want to be grounded and rooted in truth, but here's truth is that your body can heal. You know, we have a God that's for us, not against us. Like we, we, we live in a world today where we have everything, all this access to all these things, like, like knowing you're an overcomer, right? Like this is important to have this mindset of faith and hope and gratitude and love. Now, faith and hope are very similar but again, there's a sort of n knowing things are going to be okay. It's a positive attitude, gratitude, just being grateful, uh, being in a spirit of joy, and then love. And love is all about not focusing on yourself. Too many times we're just sitting here focusing on ourselves. We've got to focus on others, serving others. You know, if you're going through a hard time right now uh, in life, what, what, whether it be financial crisis or, you know, or... Um, or just worrying about the future or, or fear for a family member, whatever it is, you know, stop focusing on yourself and start focusing on serving others. What are the needs of others? It's amazing what that does for your own health and their health. You know, love is good for you and for, 
for the other person that you are showing love to. All right, a few other things that are great for strengthening your immune system, sunshine, right? Vitamin D is called the sunshine vitamin and the immune system vitamin. And so sunshine is key. I want to encourage everybody, get outside. Go for a walk in nature. And especially when the sun's out, roll up your sleeves, get sun on your body, direct sunlight. It's going to help strengthen your immune system. Here's number two, good sleep. Quality sleep is key. Get to bed earlier and get at least eight hours of sleep a night is so, so important. Walk barefoot, okay? If you can, just walk out in your grass. If you have a little bit of grass, even if it's just a patch, okay? Just get outside, walk, whether it's grass, dirt, sand, whatever it is. Heck, if it's concrete, it's still not as good, but it's still okay. So again, get outside, walk barefoot. It's called grounding, reduces inflammation, supports immunity. Uh, and then light exercise. You, you know, if you're not feeling well, you don't want to go really hard. In fact, what people ask me oftentimes, Dr. Axe, if I'm not feeling the best and I feel like I've maybe got the sniffles or, uh, or congestion or something like that, should I exercise? My answer is lightly. Go for about 20 minutes, sweat a little bit, move a minute. You do want to increase your circulation, but you don't want to tax your body where your body is having to recover from what you just did. You want your body to be able to, again, light cardio, some light body weight stuff, and then stretch or do something like a yoga flow or Pilates or bar, but something to where, hey, it's a 20 or 30, you know, 20, 30 minutes, get out or just walk. Get out and move and stretch or get on a rebound or like a mini trampoline or if you have a little bouncy ball in your house, bounce on that. You want to move your lymphatics and improve circulation to strengthen and support your immune system. So you don't want to do too much, but you don't want to just sit there and not move either. And again, there's a time if you're really feeling bad where, yes, you need to kind of be laid up for a bit, but just walking and moving a little bit, you definitely want to do that and stretching is ideal. So I want to wrap up by saying this, guys, uh, just a few things. More people need to know this truth. Like my family never knew this growing up. And because of it, like we had major health issues, like our family. And I wish we would have known this earlier. I wish everybody knew this truth as well uh, much, much earlier. And so anyways, diving back in here. So remember some of these tips, this breakdown. We talked about this key. And I, again, this disclaimer I want to throw out there. I talked about antiviral herbs. I'm not saying they correct any and every type of virus. My point is, according to the studies, they are quoting these herbs that I pulled up off of PubMed. They're, they're calling them, they're saying they have antiviral properties. That doesn't mean they're going to kill every virus on the planet. It just means they have those properties. And you may talk to your physician about if these herbs are going to be good for you. In addition to that, um, you know, you also can. Um, consume some things. Uh, again, talking about the antiviral herbs, you can also, uh, big thing, take some immune boosting foods, chicken broth, probiotic rich foods like sauerkraut, vitamin C rich vegetables like broccoli, vitamin C rich fruits like, like kiwis, green leafy vegetables, the immune supportive foods you can do much of the year, astragalus and reishi mushroom and elderberry. And then again, good old sunshine, good sleep and positive emotions. These are the things that are going to help you because remember, most of these things, synthetic things or even herbs, they don't heal you. Your body heals itself. The greatest way that you can protect yourself, protect yourself and fight things is by simply supporting and strengthening your own body using food and lifestyle. So I want to say, hey, thanks everybody for listening to this week's podcast. I'll be back next week with another podcast. Have a great week. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein.